morning and welcome to Wake Up Legendary. Happy Monday. It is, as I look at the date, Monday, April 8th. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Ready to kick off the week. Hop on. I hope you have your coffee or you're on your second cup or whatever it is that gets you fired up in the morning. Have it ready to roll because we have a pretty cool guest today that I'm really excited about. But before I bring her on, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. If you are new to the show and you would like to get a text notification Monday through Friday when we go live, it should be hitting my phone here any second, um, just text the letters WUL to 813-296-8553. We don't text anything else, just the notifications and the direct link to join us live, um, which is pretty cool. So hop on there, text the letters WUL to 813-296-8553. And I know Dave has been doing a heck of a lot of hat throws on every episode. Um, I apologize in advance. I have no hat to throw today, but I know there'll be a lot of golden nuggets. But if you would like your own legendary marketer swag, you can head over to BeLegendary.shop and grab your own hat, t-shirt, all the legendary swag you can dream up is on that site as well. Um, and then last and not least, here's a quick spot where you can upgrade to mastermind, which our guest today went to, by the way, um, where you can purchase our appetizer course, our 15 day challenge, um, head over to legendarymarketer.com slash enroll. All right. I see the comments are starting to come in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Becca. Good morning, Ashley, Carrie, Kathy, Ryan. Good morning, all. And please help me welcome Ashley to the show. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning. So where are you joining us from today? I am in Michigan and I'm so glad we have sun today because this room is not the same without the sun. <laughs> I, I can see the natural light kind of yeah. which must uh, do you do videos in there? Because that would be great lighting for some video. <laughs> it's hit or miss because if it's cloudy, it's not the same in here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I get that. I get that. Well, hopefully you're now heading into your sunny season to take oh. care of, to handle that, you know, the video yes. natural lighting in there, which That's will be right. <laughs> <laughs> So tell us a little bit about your background, your story, how you even came across Legendary to begin with. Okay. Um, okay. So my background is in teaching. I went to school um, to do elementary education and I taught for four years. I loved it. Um, I worked in an inner city situation. And um, when the company that I worked for in college who manages apartment complexes, they were building a new place and they contacted me to come back and work for them. And so at the time it was a lot more money. It was um, a less stressful environment. And so I switched, I switched gears. So I left teaching and I, I entered the property management world and I got to grow with this company for, for eight years and they were wonderful. I was able to um, manage all of their offices eventually. And, at that time, my husband and I got married, we started having kids, and I was having a difficult time with daycare. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. um, yep. And so, you know, I really always, you know, wanted more streams of income. So we even tried our hand at um, being landlords ourselves, which mm -hmm. ended horribly. We were not quite ready for that. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> But I, I've always loved side hustles and like I would look for them online. I would always read the articles that were like, you know, 30 things you should do in your 30s or, you know, so I was always looking for that kind of thing. And what first caught my attention was um, uh, a course on Amazon FBA. Okay. I was like, okay, let's try this. And as I got into it, it was super complicated. Like mm -hmm. it was going to require a lot of money to get up and running. And then the, um, the big course that walked you through everything was close to seven grand. 
And I was like, okay, that just put an end on that. Like, I'm not, I can't move forward now, you know, like I'm not going to. Right. And I just, I just, I guess I kind of stopped and thought that wasn't right for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And then at the time, um, M. Walcott's videos came up, which I, I personally know her from the Michigan area. Okay. So I was like, oh my gosh, like, no way. What is she doing? This is pretty cool. And it's kind of funny. I remember like the exact posts that really caught my eye from her. Um, and it opened my eyes to how much freelance digital marketing could be making people. Um, mm-hmm. and, and that's when, you know, I, I guess I would say I'm money motivated. I, you know, I started with teaching, then I climbed up, you know, and over doubled my income. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, like, what are they doing that would allow me to be at home with my kids and not struggle with daycare? Mm -hmm. So $7, I mean, I was like, absolutely. I'm in, let me just figure out what they're doing, you know? And then the course just I think when you started, it really sells itself because it's just like binge worthy. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. So because you went through another kind of online income stream, a different type of business model with Amazon FBA, what do you think the biggest difference is for you besides cost of course of actually going through those beginner courses what lit a fire that didn't light it in the other or what was the biggest difference for you um oh that's a really good question the their course wasn't as easy to follow um Mm -hmm. the first thing that they did was i think i i think i spent 60 dollars to buy that course Mm -hmm. and it was just their appetizer you know yeah then, which is common, I think now that I've opened my mind to this, I see that all the time now, really. Yeah, it's typical. Um, but they, right away, they wanted me to buy something else that was like the workbook to go through. And I did, you know. Right. And, uh, and so I was like, okay, like, this is going to help me, you know, figure this out. And then the next thing they did, they started to like ramp you up on like how to make money right away to help you pay to get started with Amazon FBA. So there was a whole day that talked about selling things on Facebook marketplace, which I love. Um, It was like, all of a sudden it switched gears. You weren't in, you weren't learning Amazon anymore. You were just, Hey, you need to get some. Not yet. (laughs) Not yet. I was like, okay. Cause in all fairness, they know you need money to start like um, to do the, Alibaba, whatever website, like, right, you, right. Money, you know, with this, it was just the seven day course was, um, it was, it's truly a, it teaches you about business and it teaches you how to build your own, which I never wanted my own business. Like I was afraid of mm-hmm. having like employees and like, that's too messy. Like I'm, I don't think I'm cut out for that. Okay. <laughs> um, but So when I got started, I was like, well, you know, this business is realistic to me and it teaches you, you know, how to get new leads and how to keep your same leads or the same clients that you've been working with, you know, and it it then just kind of went into teaching about these tools online that I'd never heard of. And Dave explains really well when, you know, he kind of laughs about which type of hammer do you want to choose at the store? Like, you know, he gives you a plethora and I had never heard of stuff like that. So I was like, wow, like this is simple. So Mm -hmm. the piece that um, really took off for me is the email marketing. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's what I, I, that's been my favorite. (laughs) Oh, I love that. Okay. So here's why I love that so much, because it's literally the only thing we own when we launch in the digital marketing space. We're all on social. We use social, whether organic or paid, but we don't own those accounts. We're borrowing them, right? They're they're not, they don't stay with us. We can't get mad at Facebook. Can't go get mad at TikTok. (laughs) I mean, get mad, but you're still going to lose your account if they decide to pull it, right? You don't own it. (laughs) They can do whatever they want. They can shut down. They can change their terms. They can get rid of any account that they want at any time. And there's nothing you can do about it, but your email list 
that's yours. Yeah. And that's really where that strong connection is built through that follow-up. And a lot of people sleep on their email list. A lot of people sleep on, I don't need a funnel. I don't need a list. I don't need to follow up. I don't need to be emailing regularly. I can just throw out 900 links on a link tree and be done um, and not have to deal with that piece of the, the work. But that's such an important piece of the work. So did you, were you nervous about going into it or was it exciting right from the start? Like, oh, okay, this is, this is gold. (laughs) No, it's really been exciting for me right from the start, but that's not to say that I wasn't afraid the whole time. I mean, even still to this day, I feel like nervous, you know, I feel like not nervous, but I feel like, is this going to work or how will people portray this or, you know, I is you have to have a little fearlessness in you to just you know get over get over it and then yeah. and then the excitement just kicks in so there is there, there is definitely an ingredient of stepping through fear yeah of deciding the fear feeling isn't a bad feeling it's not one to run away from yeah. a lot of times we've been taught if you feel fear you run right <laughs> yeah and And this is entrepreneurship in any form is stepping through fear and coming out the other side a little stronger, a little grittier. Joanne, Uh, do you have kids? I have three kids. You have three kids. Okay. Um, I think this is just the phase that I'm in that made me think about this. I feel like my journey with this is similar to like, if you're pregnant, like how would you feel if you woke up? one day, just nine months pregnant, you would be like, ouch, this pain, like this hurts. So like, it's miserable, (laughs) but you just like grow one day at a time. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of learn what that worked, that didn't. And then you kind of realize like, you know, it's not as scary as you thought it was yesterday, you know, like just these one, these one thing, one, if you learn one new thing a day, like I was considering that a success. I was like, okay, I'm moving forward. (laughs) Oh my gosh, guys. I love this. This is the best. What's the best analogy I've ever heard. I've never heard that before. And it is fantastic. You're whipping out some goals on Monday. I knew you would. I knew you would. (laughs) Because that's really what it is. Um, And even as a parent with your first child, everything's brand new. Everything. Every day is brand new. Every day you're like, please, how do I not screw up the day or screw up this child? I'm breathing. breathing. You don't suddenly have an 18 year old and everything, the work's done. Yeah. I had the baby and now they're 18 and the work's done. It's a process and being an entrepreneur, stepping through new skills, stepping into something that's scary. It, it's the same. It's really similar. And I, and I love that analogy. I love that. Um, what a great way to put it. So as far as timing, I know you, you didn't start a month ago. It wasn't like you just started. So how, when did you take the challenge over a year ago, over a year? <clears throat> so it was in November of 22 is when I mm-hmm. bought yeah. the challenge. Yeah. Um, and then I, 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 <laughs> Hence my name. I was planning on like starting this on maternity leave. So I was just kind of setting all my stuff up and I have funny pictures of me like super pregnant, sitting in the kitchen with my three-year-old who wouldn't sleep. (laughs) I was like working on my ebook. I was like, I'm doing this. Like I have to get this done. So, um, so I didn't start posting until March of last year. Okay. It's been about a whole year. And when I started posting, like, I'm not a social media person at all. So I knew this was going to be something I was going to, I had to learn and figure out. And I just started slow. I started like once a day on TikTok until I got the rhythm of like how to edit. And then like, I need more. Okay. Now I'm going to try twice a day or three times a day. Mm -hmm. And so then it wasn't until the end of the year that I, finally started Instagram and Facebook. 
Okay. Um, the platforms are also di different. Like, I wish I had all the answers for you guys, but I know. <laughs> Um, they're also different, but I recently, um, have, have refocused on TikTok. So, um, mm -hmm. TikTok was funny for a while. I got some of my videos like shut down for content reasons and I didn't know why. And well, then I stopped posting so much on there and I started on, um, Instagram and Facebook and Facebook really took off for me. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you why. <laughs> um, and now I'm back to focusing on TikTok and then I'll like download the video from TikTok mm -hmm. and I'll upload it to Facebook. And then you cannot upload that video to Instagram because it will not push it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's just angry. <laughs> it does that does not it does not work. So I I sometimes try and like download it without the words and then I put the words in Instagram. Mm. Um but yeah, it's a hit and miss, hit and miss. But I, I think that's, first of all, so we've been at this for over a year. Yeah. How did you keep going through what we call the valley of despair? <laughs> the I'm going to show up every day and learn a little more and implement every day when nobody's watching. Yeah. I think it, I think, um, like I really, truly, 100% believe in this. And I believe that you can do this in, I mean, I don't even want to say the word believe. Like I know it's true. You can do this in any field that you want to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have like a little ADD because I want to start like a prayer page. I want my mom to start a health page because she's mm -hmm. gone through so, like I just, I'm all over the place. <laughs> I know that it works and I think, I think the key for everybody is like, as you're going along, like some things you're going to do flawlessly and you're going to be like, Oh, that was easy. Like, you know, I got my ebook <laughs> or maybe, but then what really hit me hard was, um, my content. So when I started this, my story was a little different than after we had a baby, right? And I started posting, I, I got really sick with preeclampsia. And oh. then my husband traveled for work. And so he was gone and then he took a new job and then he decided to move. <laughs> so, I, so I was all over the place. And then once we moved, it was like, am I going to find a new job or am I going to, um, I get to stay home with the kids for a little bit mm -hmm. and this is my time to figure this out or, you know, or I can always go back and find a job. Right. You know, and so I just knew that this worked and I had to figure out what my content was. And I had changed my story a little bit because of what was happening in my life. And I don't think that helped me at all on TikTok. You know, that was kind of, I think that was a little confusing, but they're um, all pieces of your story. You were just show, you were just choosing to share this piece. And then all of a sudden it turned into this piece and that piece. Yeah. So it looked like you were three different people. Yeah, it, it, I do think it was confusing because it wasn't yeah. like I made so much money my first month that I got to leave my job and be a stay-at-home mom. Right. You know, you know, like our family moved, like there was, you know, trying to tell that story. It was a little complicated. But I just think that what I'm trying to say is like, you know, when you get to a point where you're stuck in your business, like that might be where you need more help. So that's where I would go back and like, one, rewatch the challenge and the blueprints. Like I've watched them many times. Yeah. I haven't gone all the way through the blueprints, but there's a lot to it. <laughs> there are. And and there's parts that are for different seasons of your business too. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I also reached out to other people who were doing well to see like, hey, my content, it's not all that. So like what can you what can you tell me about this? Mm-hmm. So Which which is hard to do, actually. A lot of people, because it requires you to go, okay, I got to look at myself. Yeah. I find, you know, I have to be critical. But you can do it without bullying yourself. You got to almost look at your content like it's not you. Yeah. Because that's if you're, you're looking at it as it's someone else and you need to critique it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it, it, critique is meant to ha be helpful. 
It's meant to help you grow. It's meant to help you try new things, to make adjustments. Um, but it's really hard to critique yourself because a lot of times people start to do that and they're like, oh, I'm a failure. And that, that negative self-talk comes in or they take the feedback from someone and I'm saying, we don't, I don't, I think you are not good. And it's like, no, it's just the content. It's this one video. That's it. And I'm trying to help you. And there's a, there's a way to, it's a hard thing to do. Um, and when you can get through that, I, I think that's where there's a lot of light at the tunnel, light at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. like start looking at your own content with marketing glasses instead of a self-critical viewpoint. Yeah, very true. Which is, which is hard for people to do, which I think is important. <laughs> like I learned from other people were like simple too. They were, they were more of like a, this video is great, but you didn't put a call to action. And I was like, what? I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> Or there, I, I even remember like M. Walcott sharing. She's like, I was so excited. I went back and you couldn't hear my voice. Or she was like super dark, like there was no lighting on her face. And um, and, I have, and it's that's okay. And sometimes like I just got the video out. I'm so it took me forever to hit post. I was so nervous. Um, yeah, it's taking imperfect action every day. Yeah, is really just allow yourself grace that you're going to get better at it, but you can't get better at it until you start doing it. Well, I don't, I feel like too, if you're going to start anything new, this is even a brand new job that you go out and find. You're going to have to learn the company's new software, their policies, like the people that you work with. And so I always feel like give yourself an entire year to like learn the business, learn the lingo, learn how how it looks, you know, in the spring, how does it look in the winter? You know, like it just, you need, you got to give yourself a lot of time to take out anything new. And so, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're posting and you don't have success after two weeks or after a month, like it's don't give up at that point. Like there's so much more to come and it goes back to like, do you, do you believe that it'll work? Do you believe that you got to keep getting better to make right. it work? So let's like even look at it as brick and mortar. Mm. Probably takes, you know, you got to rent a building, buy a building. It's six months of prep and insurance and all the things that you're paying on this building. Your doors aren't even open yet. Just to say we're open. And then you got to market and get people in. Could you imagine just quitting a month after opening the corner store? True. <laughs> It's just, it, it, it's not, hot. you can't do that. It's, it's not realistic. Um, there's a three-year vision. There's a five-year vision. And I really, really, one of my personal goals this year is to have our community and our students realize this is not a one-month thing. This is not a two-month thing. I want you to feel worthy enough to have your one-year vision, your three-year vision, your five-year vision for the business that you're building and that you're learning right now. Yeah, it's so true. Okay. I love having goals like that. I feel like when I started in my management position, um, they sent me to do a bunch of outreach things and a lot of, you know, the chamber stuff would talk about, you know, your vision for three years and five years. And of course I was taking that and doing it with like the business that I worked for. Like, like what do I want the, this company to be doing, you know? And then I would go back to my office and I would do some email marketing in my own way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and then that's when I, you know, going through this challenge, it just a light bulb went off and I was like, I can do this for myself. Like, mm -hmm. I'll be mine. <laughs> right? You don't have to hire 10 people to help you. <laughs> you don't have to. You can start it on your own. You don't have to clock in at 9 a.m. You don't have to clock out at a certain time. Um, yes, it takes time every day, but as a busy mom, it might be a few hours on a Monday and on a Thursday, you may find yourself that you're able to put in more time or want to, or can have the ability, um, or it demands it. 
but it, it varies, but it could be at 10 p.m. at night instead. <laughs> it, it's just not on a set schedule unless that's what you need to stay consistent. Um, and that's where, as the entrepreneur, everyone's got to decide what's going to help them be cons consistent, what that schedule is, how to stay accountable to themselves. As the boss and employee of their own business, you answer to yourself. How can you be accountable to yourself? Yeah. Um, and it, that's that's all part of this. It's part of that learning process as well. Um, and new habits aren't built overnight. They take time to establish as well. Um, so we, we all need a little, allow ourselves more grace and understanding of the, the long-term vision that we have. There shouldn't be a, I'm going to be in this niche for two months, and then I'm going to be in another niche after that. And then I really want to be here once I know everything. And it's like, well, you're just wasting your time for six months. Start with the one that you want to be in long term. Yeah. Launch there. That's what you need to start with and go after and build those roots, grow those roots for that business now as you're learning and grow that. Um, that would be my biggest piece of advice. But let's go into, because our title says this strategy, and I believe it deals with email marketing. <laughs> how did email marketing, how did, what's your strategy that really helped build your audience for you? What, where did you see that happen? Okay. So what I think is, um, <clears throat> there, every, everybody, <clears throat> MLMs get a bad rap. <clears throat> well, let me back up. <clears throat> I think in the, in the, um, the blueprints, it talks mm -hmm. about like starting small, you know, and then, yeah. and then growing into, you know, like if you want to talk about making money online, you know, just try and do that a little bit first. Don't come out with the big guns and say, I made it and you can right. too, you know? Yeah. So um, I started with Amazon and um, I have, I have, I don't want to say I've done MLMs because I've never really marketed it. I, marketing is new to me, but mm -hmm. I, have bought into some of them because I love the products and I still use okay. them. And so yeah. I have a lot of family and friends who also love them. And, you know, I get the, I get the, you know, discount on it. So what I would do for years <clears throat> is I would have a Excel. I love Excel. Mm -hmm. And I just had like a manual list. And when it was time for me to place an order, I would blind carving copy. And it was just one email that went out. Well, so I had this, this little list, you know, mm -hmm. so now I can, whenever the time is right, you know, sit down and put together an email, like no big deal. Right. And, and um, it, it's just automatic. Now. <laughs> it's like, I can do one on Monday and I can schedule it or I can just, um, you know, let them run and keep adding to it. So mm -hmm. when I, when I want to build a lead magnet for this kind of thing, like those emails are all there waiting, you know? Right. Which I'm really excited about. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, those two things happen for me first, like, you know, mm -hmm. Amazon affiliate and stuff that I'd already been doing, but thanks to email marketing, it was able to pick up. Which is huge because you had that follow-up got to show back up to this person like, hey, how's it going? It's like saying hello to some, seeing someone after you met him for the first time and you saw him again at Starbucks and you're like, hey, how's it going? You have a little chit chat. Send it, it's, they're reading a little email. That's what that is, guys. Yes. <laughs> Building connection. You're not like, hey, let's get married. <laughs> your bank account, your credit card, buy all the things from me immediately. Um, and I see accounts like that and they're like, no, I'm building, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get conversions. And it's like, you're, you're asking for a proposal and a bank <laughs> account basically of a stranger. And that's weird. That makes people feel uncomfortable. They're not going to follow you for that. But if you're the person that's like, Hey, how's it going? And you can share stories. You can exchange a little chit chat about the day. And then the next time you see him, you share a little more. And the next time you see him, you share a little more. And those next times are your emails, which is huge. And I love that you now find it easy to just whip out another email a couple times a week, which yeah. is so cool. 
I think too, um, one thing that I learned kind of <clears throat> later is how to, I mean, I use AWeber and how to tag an email. And then like, if somebody does this, send them here. If somebody does this, send them here. And I feel like that's an amazing tool I knew nothing about. Yeah, if you that get works. really good at it, suddenly you can have a bunch of different campaigns based off of what they've shared their interest is, of what link they've clicked in email number 10, and can opt them into a whole other email sequence, um, or opt them, you know, or they didn't open, and you, you know, different activity, different behavior that they're showing you. Um, you can get pretty intricate and there are some people that get lost in the <laughs> lost in the in the tags in the campaigns. But as long as you're emailing and you have value in them, um, that's what's key. And just keep that communication growing, keep growing that connection. Um, it's just such an overlooked piece. And I love that you've embraced that. It's been fun. I think I think because I had a background in not doing it automatically, but in when I worked as a manager, like in property management, I was trying to bring in, re, uh, I, want, I want to say new leads, but anybody who reached out to us, I would constantly follow up with them and see, do you still need housing? I have some for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I feel like that's kind of been the fun part to me because I already kind of knew how to do it, but now there's a new software to learn, you know. Yeah. Yeah. To do it. Cool. So you did attend mastermind in December, correct? Yes, I did. Yeah. So you've already, you did challenge basically a year before that, then attended mastermind. What did you gain? If anything, I don't know how your experience <laughs> went. I hope it was good, but we'll find out here. Um, from that experience, what was your biggest takeaway? Okay. It was awesome. I can't wait to come back to another one. I, I, I would love to, to be at another one here soon, hopefully this year. <clears throat> but well, I was surprised that a lot of people go to a mastermind before they even started. A lot of people do. <laughs> yeah, norm, I think. But um, yeah. I was doing it more so thinking like, I got to get my feet wet so that I have the right questions to ask while I'm there and, mm -hmm. and what to do. Um, but it was just, it's amazing. It's like, you know, it's just, it's just more education that goes right along with the, the challenge or the blueprints. And, but then it's live and you can talk to people in person about like what you're doing, you know, what I've tried, you know, and some people, they, they were, you know, they were just excited that I had already started. Um, and maybe I, hopefully I was able to, I'm like, it's not a scary, like, just go ahead. <laughs> right? Like you can do this. You, you ended up being a couple cheerleaders, which, which is probably good, right? For some people. And then, you know what? I met so many great people. I, we exchanged phone numbers. Like we still talk, and, you know, email back and forth. It was really, it was really nice and completely worth it. And I, I think too, like, it's fun to go and learn those things because I have not gone through the mastermind um, education yet, mm -hmm. but what if someday I want to throw on an event like that? Like, I think I could put together an event, you know, and once I know more about, you know, what I want that event to be. And I would love, you know, I think if you want to do that, like, it's important to go to something like this and learn how the professionals do it. <laughs> yeah. And it's one of the blueprints that we have because yeah. <clears throat> so cool is gosh when you start down this path this is what i love there's so much more that's possible the more you learn the more you apply the more your business grows and evolves over time doesn't happen in a month it doesn't happen in three months but year three you might find that with the way you, the community you've built it makes sense to have an in-person event you want to see them all connected and and have that and have that a part of your business now. Um, but it's not something you would have done in the first couple of years, but it made sense then. And you, you have some people to ask questions to. You have that experience of being an attendee at event as well um, and decide if it's something you want to put on your business vision board for the future as something possible. It's now an option. 
And I love that you said that. It, it's like it, it, it could be something that I might want to do for my business down the line. Um, and now you have that there as another tool that you can use. Yeah. Timing's right and you're excited about it and it just makes sense for your business. Yeah. Just pretty awesome. Well, I'm glad that you had a good experience. I love, personally, I love masterminds. I know it may seem biased, but we are a fully remote company and the people that I talk to every day, it's just cool to see them in 3D and give them a hug and just, <laughs> you know, to see each other a few times a year when normally we don't. Um, and they're just, they're just all my people. And that's what's cool about even being an attendee is you're surrounded by, it's just cool to be surrounded by like-minded people. Yes that have some of the same goals, the same targets, the same ideas, and some of the same questions and worries too. Yeah. You guys just make it so fun too. I don't know when you added in the, um, the I don't know what you call it. I forget the dance party. Dance or party? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was so fun because, you know, all of a sudden you see people kind of in a different light and it's a little more lighthearted and you get to talk to more people. It's, I, it is, it's like a networking thing. Like you, you love the opportunities to get to talk to people about all this stuff and you meet so many different people. Like, you know, I met a husband and wife duo that, you know, were newly empty nesters. And, and I was like, okay, like a, a different perspective than what I'm doing in my business, but it's really exciting to like get to talk to people in person about that. Right. Yeah. And all of, I mean, everybody's dancing for the most part. <laughs> which is so much fun. Um, Dave is out there in the middle of the dance floor. He's, you know, going after every song, having a blast. Uh, we're taking pictures. Everyone's just, it's just a really relaxed, fun time with really cool people, I think. Yeah, it is, absolutely. Which is cool. I love it. So what's your advice for somebody newer who says, I hate email. I hate receiving email. I just want to make, I don't want to, I'm, I'm an introvert. I don't want to have to talk to people. <laughs> yeah. They want to, they want to get an online business launched and that's why they're here. Um, what's your advice for them to, to step forward a little bit? Well, I have a few things that, I, that come to mind, I guess, but as far as in, as the email goes, like, I wake up to maybe 20 new emails a day from Gap. <laughs> what, what else? I get like, they email market like crazy. And right. so look at your own emails. Like, do you like those? Because I do. I'm like, oh, sweet. It's a discount. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so I, an email isn't as scary as you might feel like it is. Like, you probably sign up for a bunch of emails yourself. And if you find the right target audience, they want to hear from you. Like, right. like, don't forget that. Like, people come to you for a reason. And if you're no longer their cup of tea, they'll unsubscribe, you know. But it's just okay. You don't want them on your list. Then right. they're not helping your list be healthy, right? Right. right. You, don't, you don't have to get your feelings hurt. Like, I mean, which, mm -hmm. hey, sometimes I do when I wake up and all of a sudden I have like two less. Uh, people on TikTok, I'm like, what, what did I do to lose those two? <laughs> but it's okay. It's just, it really is, you know. Yeah, you can't, like, you can't look at the numbers by the day. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta, that's, that's that bigger vision. Otherwise, we're going to be really hard on ourselves, <laughs> for sure. You know, and something else about email marketing, there could be 20 emails in my inbox when I wake up. I may not read any of them, but I'm not unsubscribing. And when I'm ready because I want something from Gap or whatever it is, I'm going to open that email because there might be a coupon, there might be a special offer, there might be something that's going on that piques my interest. Um, and I, I don't unsubscribe because at some point I might want something that they're sending me. Exactly. And, and that's the gold of the follow-up is they may not open every email. And you're going to get better at writing emails to get that open rate open, um, that open rate percentage higher. Yeah. Um, but you'll you'll keep, if they're still there, they still want to listen to you. So 
So it's not about how they have to open every single email and be totally engaged and click every link. It's not about that. It's just if you are in the pet niche and someone else is in the pet niche, but Susie has opted into both, but one is not emailing and six months from now they get a new puppy and they're ready for whatever you got going on the email that's hit their inbox is the one they're going to click a link on so are you going to be the one that shows up or someone else <laughs> someone else who that's did enough. keep showing up and that's the difference is there because we can't determine when someone's ready to click a link but we can show up and still be there so that we're available when they are I think that kind of sounds to me too, like what, when people think something is saturated, it's not like how many people are in the pet niche that will never be oversaturated. No, everybody, people are buying new dogs all the time and they want to follow, you know, not just one person, they probably want to follow 20 people. Right. And the algorithm be algorithming. <laughs> if you suddenly watch a few pet videos, <laughs> now your whole feed is pet. Yes. All of TikTok is pet is pet videos, right? Yes. See, all you have to do is hold down and say not interested and go search a, a niche that you are, and your whole feed will change overnight to something else. <laughs> right now, I am on horse TikTok because I, it's been full season. I've been watching videos of the little baby horses running around. So you'd think I was a freaking horse connoisseur, ranch owner, or something, if you logged into my TikTok for the last like five days, because my algorithm changed based off of my viewing habits. And if I decided I no longer wanted to be on horse talk, I could say I'm not interested and my whole algorithm will change. Or if I went and started a new account, um, none of those videos that I was seeing every day or type of content would show up at all. None of it. So, and you can even go and reset your algorithm um, in your settings, by the way. You can go reset your For You page to get rid of all of your history of what to show you uh, if you really want to change what you're seeing. And then you'll realize nothing's saturated, which is beautiful. <laughs> you can, it's just all based on your interests, so to speak. That's a huge mindset shift. A lot of people say it's saturated. A lot of people do it. Mm -hmm. I want to say it surprises me, but at first I, I didn't realize, I didn't know that there was a whole world of this happening out there. And at and first, I kind of thought, yeah, you know, it is saturated until I started looking into it more. And I'm like, no, it will never be saturated. <laughs> Just won't. And it, it's an easy test. Go make another account on TikTok or Instagram and you'll have a different, totally different thing. Instagram right now thinks I'm a male because I have, I own a Jeep Wrangler and I love, and my son always sends me, you know, videos of fast cars doing things. And so I, I have, a, I'm on like car talk on Instagram, on my personal Instagram feed right now. Like it's all over the place. I'm getting served ads that are clearly for males and not for females. Um, but that's what's happening right now because that's what I've been watching. Yeah. So I can sit here and be like, oh, the car industry is saturated. There's so many people trying to be affiliates for Jeep parts and trying to sell all their, you know, post all their affiliate links for Jeep parts, which is every video right now on my feed. Um, I could say that because yeah. that's what I'm seeing. But I know what's happening and I, I can go and adjust my behavior online, my, <laughs> <laughs> of my watch time and adjust that and start seeing something else. <laughs> <laughs> With Instagram, you just got to search other topics and start telling it you're interested in other things. Um, and then, then what's suggested to you will change fairly quickly as well. It's usually within a couple of days. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Yeah. I think I've, all, I've also, I've just noticed more too, like, how does this all work? Like you said, like if I watch one video all the way through and then it puts that, that same person's video in front of me three times, mm -hmm. well, now I just learned, well, that's what's happening to my videos. I got to put them out there or else they won't get three videos in a row. <laughs> right, exactly. Or well, there won't be three more videos to show them because you only posted one and you got scared or you waited a week and a half and now they're not showing anymore because you weren't showing up consistently. Yeah. To give you a chance. Yeah. 
Damn. So my other my other advice for people just starting, I see a few people in the comments saying this, but like, um, so I just helped my my cousin get started, and he was so nervous to post. He he was getting all of his stuff ready, and I was like, look, if I could do this again, from the beginning, nobody's gonna watch these first few videos. Like, get your nerves out of the way because yeah. it's not gonna probably not going to reach millions of people <laughs> your Most first time. not and i know that's, that's also hard than the people some go well then why am i even starting well because you got to grow at it and you yeah. hey you know like being pregnant like you don't want your first video to be seen by a million people at least i did it because i was like it wasn't that good <laughs> <laughs> but you started but you start you just start yeah you've got to get it out there you it, and you know, Dave uses this analogy a lot. You just can't get better at basketball sitting on the bench all the time. At some point, you have to go in and, and practice shooting and passing and being in the game and practice the tasks. Yeah. And the only way to practice our tasks is to go and launch, go and do. I was surprised about, like, I was kind of worried about friends and family seeing my stuff. Mm -hmm. But when you set up your account a certain way, which isn't hard, I mean, you know, public, I, not as many people as I know in real life have seen my stuff like I thought they would, you know? Right. Yeah. I, I just, I wouldn't worry about it. No. And if somebody asks, be confident of what you're starting. Don't yeah. leave. Oh, I'm going to be a millionaire. Don't lead with income because you don't know what's going to happen with there. And that will turn people off and freak them out. But you can lead. Oh, this is what I'm, I'm learning. I'm actually taking courses and I'm applying what I'm learning and I'm growing an online business and seeing where it takes me. Yeah. And that could be a beautiful thing. And you probably gain more support that way too, with that mindset, <laughs> the way you, pre you present it. <laughs> Wait, can I tell you the... <clears throat> Worst advice that I ever got. Oh, I love it. Yes, please. Was um, it was before all of this. It was, I think, when I was looking at the Amazon FBA, <clears throat> I had a friend of mine say, Well, whatever you do, don't buy a course. <clears throat> I was yeah. like, What? I was like, There's what do you mean? There's courses, like you know, and I right away started like looking into this. What do you mean, don't buy a course? <clears throat> Well, I feel like that's maybe that's exactly what I needed to buy the course because I was like, I got to see what you're talking about, you know. <laughs> and I now that I've opened up my mind to this, like there are so many wonderful resources out there that people have put together that will help, you know. And not to say like to jump out and purchase them all, like be reasonable with what you're buying, but. I think people are afraid to buy a course because there's a lot of scams and stuff out there. Not these people. I think everybody listening is, is, is it a legendary like for the public or is it? It is. Yeah. And we put on Spotify and Apple podcasts and YouTube and yeah. Yeah. So I feel like, I feel like a lot of people here might have the mindset already of like looking, looking into this, but the people who are afraid saying like it's a scam and don't do it. Maybe they've been scammed before. Maybe they yeah. went down the wrong place and I, you kind of got drawn back in and say, this is not that, you know? Well, there's there's a lot of good courses and there's a lot of bad courses. And there's sometimes people, they're brand new to building a course. Yeah. <laughs> or, oh, I'm just going to build a course so I have my own product. But they're not really good at teaching. They're just starting. They're just starting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and that's also also we all learn different. We all remember even in our own school age, different teachers made a different impact. And some teachers we had a really hard time learning from that specific teacher. Their teaching style didn't match with our learning style, right? Yeah. And that's one of the things I love about our 15 day challenge is you get to go in for a pretty nominal amount of money, seven bucks, and all determine, can I learn here? Is this my style of learning? I think it might not be, and that's okay. But you yeah. can at least determine that and see how you connect with the teacher, which is another important piece. 
Do I connect with the teacher? How long have they been around? What support's available? Do they have customer support? Do they have a refund policy? Do they have all those pieces in place of a solid business? Or is this somebody that just threw a course out in a month and they've only been doing it for four and there's nothing in place for support? They tell you to DM them if you got a question. Um, you know, there's no phone number to call. There's no <laughs> like where is because that's a different beast than being doing affiliate links and, and that sort of thing. There, there's a different beast that comes along when you become a horse creator. <laughs> yeah, that's important. I think I think it's important too. like you said, the live support like mm -hmm. that's so amazing. And you don't have to join it live. You can go back and watch the recordings, which yeah has been really fun for me because I'm like, oh, I missed the one or two o'clock, you know, but I can just play it whenever I want. Like that's a whole addition to the education that you guys put in place already. I know. And it can help. What's cool is our, our marketing coaches are so seasoned. They've done, done it all. You can come back a year from now. You can come back to those calls two years from now and get free questions about maybe the event you're going to launch. Right. It doesn't always have to be your beginning. It can be at different seasons of your business through your process and you always have access to it, which is really cool. Yeah. So you can ask those questions, which cool. I love. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This has been an amazing conversation. I've loved sitting down and chatting with you um, and you definitely need to come back because I know Dave would love to chat with you as well. Um, <laughs> I appreciate you, you coming on and giving us a little time on this Monday morning. Oh, I had so much fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah, our pleasure and definitely come back. <laughs> okay, have a great day. You too. Oh, I love this. This was such a fun conversation. Um, I really did feel like, I, even though I only have water, I did feel like I was sitting down having coffee with her. And um, that's just one of the things I love about connecting with people in our community um, and being able to do at a live event on Decade in a Day and, and just really having these fantastic conversations, which is so fun. Everyone, please go give Ashley a follow on TikTok at Maternity Leave Mama. It's all connected. Mama is M-A-M-A -A at the end, Maternity Leave Mama. Go find her account. Give her a follow. Let her know that you saw her interview on Wake Up Legendary. And as always, have a fantastic day, everyone, and stay legendary. Peace.